Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? We'll uh, be starting this English lesson in about 40 seconds. Just let me make sure everything is working. Hi to Wanda and Lolly Lolly and oh, well, we have a Nelly Nelly now and Freddy Wolf and know that. Good to see you here. Um, know that says it really is an interesting topic. It is cheating cheaters, people who cheat. Uh, it was it was fun to do the uh, re research on this one and put together all of the uh, slides over there. Where are we at here? 10 seconds. I better get ready. Everything seems to be working properly. So, that's good. You can hear my chair squeak. <laughs> it's getting a little bit old. So, I'll have to maybe get a new one someday. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about cheating. More broadly, this is a lesson on lying and cheating and a little bit on stealing. In English, we often use all three words together. They mean slightly different things. But people who lie, cheat and steal are not very nice people. Um although I dare say most of you at one point in your life maybe cheated on something in school. Maybe. I'm not saying you did but it's possible. Human beings like to sometimes take the easy way. Sometimes they like to instead of doing it the way you're supposed to, they like to cheat a little bit. Or take a little shortcut. Or I'll talk about both of those words in just a moment. But welcome to this English lesson about cheating. I noticed the picture is covering the letter G just slightly. Sorry about that. Um, I I should have fixed that, but I think you can tell that it ends in a G. So welcome to this English lesson about cheating. Hey, before we get started, hello to Lolly Lolly Wanda Ulia. Know that. Uh, let me scroll back here. Freddie Wolf, Cat Diary, uh, Dutin, Kao, Hussein, John, um, Kakachen. I know Hafiez was here earlier. Not sure if Hafiez is still here. Uh, good to see all of you. Unsel is here. Good to see Unsel as well. Denis, um, and a lot of other familiar names. I hope, oh, John Wedge is here. Key Park is here. Uh, awesome to see all of you. It is kind of fun on a Friday morning. To see some, I always say some familiar faces. I should say it's fun to see some familiar names. I know what some of you look like but not all of you. So, anyways, welcome. I think this will be a fun lesson. I only have about 25 words this morning, words and phrases. Um, I do have to wrap this up in about 45, 50 minutes uh, but uh, welcome. Remember, if you want to have conversations in English in the chat, that is a great thing to do. You have this time every week for an hour where you can uh, have little conversations with other English learners. So, do take advantage of that. I always say when I teach in real life, I don't want my students to talk. When I teach during a live stream, it's actually good. If I'm boring, have a little conversation with each other. If you have a question, please put it in the form. I think I actually forgot to put a link to the form in the comments below. So, I'm gonna do that really quickly here uh, or in the description below. Um, just give me two seconds to put that there. Uh, Nightbot will be sharing it as well. So, it's not like it's the end of the world but uh, if you look in the description below now, uh, you will see it there. Um, let me make sure. Let me see here. Oh, did I already click? I did. I started the lesson. I must have hit the arrow key by accident. So, uh don't look at that first slide. It's a, a spoiler alert. <laughs> the first slide is popping up without us knowing it. So, uh anyways, uh I think I've said everything I normally say. Let me do one more audio check. I feel like I'm talking a little fast this morning. I'll try to fix that for you. But um Yes, I think that's everything. Enjoy the lesson. Here we go. To cheat. So, this is a very broad term. The verb to cheat can be used to refer to a number of different things. Probably the most common for me would be to think about a student who cheats on a test or a student at school that cheats on their work. So, when you cheat at school, it means Instead of writing the answers down because you have memorized them, you maybe put them on a little piece of paper or you write them on your hand or arm or you try to look at someone else's paper. So, when you cheat, it means you don't do the work you're supposed to at school. It can also mean if you're playing a game with someone, 
instead of following the rules, you break the rules when no one is looking. So, sometimes when you play cards with someone, you know, they might keep a card up their sleeve. No, I don't think anyone actually does that but you can also cheat at games. You can also cheat in a relationship and I'll talk about that a bit later as well but the general term to cheat refers to let me see. I'm trying to think of the opposite. Like, it's the opposite of good, nice, kind behavior. It's like behavior where you're trying to um yeah, you didn't do the work but you're trying to make it look like you did the work. So, one way that you can cheat and by the way, the reason I'm doing this lesson is I read an article about someone cheating while running a marathon. So, when you run a race, if you take a shortcut, that would be considered cheating. So, a shortcut would mean if you have to run to the end of the street and then turn around and come back, you only run halfway and then you turn around and come back and you say that you ran the whole way. The article I read about someone cheating in the marathon, they actually ran part of the marathon and then they they took a city bus for part of the marathon and then got off. By the way, a marathon is a 26 mile competitive run. So, uh, obviously, if you take a bus during a marathon, that would be cheating um but we would the more specific term would be to take a shortcut to copy. So, when you cheat at school by looking at someone else's paper or someone else's test, we call this copying. Sometimes when you are writing a quiz, okay, not you. Sometimes when some people are writing quizzes, they don't know the answer and so they copy from the person beside them. They look over their shoulder um and they look at okay, what do they have for number one and then they write it down. What do they have for number two and then they write it down. So, when you cheat at school, we generally refer to it as copying. We also call it cheating of course. So, the official term in an academic setting is plagiarism. The verb is to plagiarize. So, when you copy another student's work, we just call it copying but when you go on the internet and you take someone else's words and sentences and paragraphs and you put them into a school assignment and say you wrote those words even though you took them from someone else, we call that plagiarism. We say that you have plagiarized. You have decided to take someone else's um writing and say that you wrote it. Not a very good idea. This is very serious in school. If you are caught plagiarizing, it goes on your permanent record and I think in most schools, if you plagiarize more than once, you you might get kicked out. In some schools, if you plagiarize once, you could get kicked out. So, don't take other people's writing and say that it is your own. Don't use the that's why I have the copy paste sentence or images here. Don't go and find something and copy and paste it and say that uh say that you wrote it. Not a good thing to falsify. So, I falsified this award. Um I falsified this award last night. I found um a template for world's best teacher and I put my name on it with the date. I put it really far in the future because maybe I will win this award. I don't think so but when you falsify something, we're usually talking about documents. You know, maybe someone claims they're a doctor but they falsified their diploma. They just made it themselves. Maybe you are applying for a job and you falsify the documents. So, you you create documents that are um not true. You say, oh, I I won best teacher in uh Portugal in 2023. I here's my award but it's simply something that you made. You didn't actually get the award. We would say that you have falsified that document. So, Um even the signature down here, I falsified that. It's not my real signature. So, when you create a document yourself and make it look like a real official document, we would use the verb falsify. And then in court, uh, I hope this isn't someone from an actual news article but in court, if you say you saw something that didn't actually happen, we call that false testimony. If I see an accident and my friend drives into someone else's car 
and then I go to court and say, no, 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 the other person drove into my friend. It's the other person's fault. That would be false testimony. This is also a bad thing to do. You can go to jail, I think, if you lie in court. So, but we would call that false testimony. When you go to court and you lie about what you saw, uh, it's better to go and tell the truth if you are a witness. Uh to fudge. So, this is kind of a funny one. Um often when you play a sport where you write down your own score, um sometimes the people you're playing with might fudge their score a little bit. When you fudge your score, it means like if you're playing golf and it took you five hits to get the ball in. You know, you hit the ball from the tee and you hit it three times on the on the fairway and then you putted once on the green and it was five total shots and then you go and you write four on it. We're saying we would say that you are fudging your golf score. So, you're you're cheating a little bit. You're uh you're lying a little bit. You see how cheating and lying are kind of similar. So, um but sometimes people will fudge their golf score a little bit. So, depending on what your friends are like, um you might wanna keep an eye on them when they write their score down to make sure they're not fudging their score. And by the way, I see someone say, oh, Hafia says, I love to eat fudge. Fudge is actually a food as well. A very sweet, sweet, yummy food made made from like sugar and condensed milk. Very yummy. So, this is a big one. Um this is a little tricky to talk about um because I like to keep my lessons safe for work, safe to use in school. But when you are in a romantic relationship, you uh will have a physical relationship as well. You will sleep together and sometimes one of the partners will sleep with someone else. And we call that cheating. The formal term is adultery. Adultery is when if you're married to someone and one of the people in the marriage goes and has sex like sleeps with someone else, we call that adultery. But the more common word would be to say cheat. You know, he's cheating on his wife. Uh she's cheating on her husband. It means they've gone outside of the relationship uh and are getting physical intimacy from another person. So, the official term adultery but the more common way to describe this would be um that someone is cheating on someone. So, in this picture, um he might think his wife is asleep and then it looks like maybe he's texting another woman. I don't know. I don't know the details. Anyways, adultery and cheating. To cut corners. So, this happens in construction sometimes. This can happen on large projects. In order to save money, people might not use the right materials or the proper methods when they're building something or doing something and we say that they are cutting corners. They do this to save money. Um there was recently a building close to me where the building um the company building it cut corners. They kind of cheated a little bit and lied a little bit and then the building started to fall over. Uh, Yes, that even happens in Canada. Buildings sometimes under construction start to fall over. So, when you cut corners, you're kind of you're cheating a little bit. You're trying to uh, make money by not using the proper materials or maybe just not using the right method for what you are doing. Hey, let's look at some questions. I was gonna read the chat. Um Hafia says that co- to copy slide reminds me of one of Mr. Bean's scenes. Yes, in Mr. Bean, he does copy once, isn't it? Um and then Freddie says, copying is not the sure way to have the right answers. That's true. How do you know if the person beside you uh has the right answers? Like if you're copying from someone. Uh let's see. Uh <laughs> know that says, ah, this is the year you win against the AI. Yes, we'll see how it goes. Um The AI though, so smart. Um okay, let me see here. I wanted to get questions on the screen. Let me get a question up there from know that. Hello, Bob. What's the most creative way um someone has ever tried to trick or scam you? Thanks in advance. So, right now, even just recent, I'll just talk about the most recent one because I get a lot of weird emails um to my business email account for the YouTube channel. The last one they took like the images and pictures of another English YouTuber, another person who teaches English on YouTube and then they made a fake account 
and then that person was asking if I wanted to collaborate that with them on a video but I knew it wasn't really them because I've already talked to them via email a few times over the last couple of years. Um so, when I got that email, I could see right away that the email address was kind of weird um but the picture, the little um picture of the person was the right person and it really looked like it. The other thing that gave it away was they wanted me to download some funny looking file that had all of their ideas for a video we could do together and I looked at the file and I was like, that is not a normal looking document. That's like definitely some sort of executable. So, anyways, I get a lot of those for sure. Um from Nelly, do students cheat at school there in Canada? How so, how do you react as a teacher to students who try to cheat at school? So, it depends on the level of cheating. If a student in my class, if I saw them cheating on a quiz, I would probably say, let's talk in the hallway. I would take their quiz. They would get a zero on that quiz and I would give them a warning. I would just say, uh, look, that is totally unacceptable. You're gonna get a zero on this quiz. Every future quiz, you're gonna have to write the quiz far away from other students uh, and if I catch you cheating again, you're gonna be talking to the principal instead of me. So, you can eventually get kicked out of a class. If you if you cheat once, twice, three times, you might just not get the credit. You might just get kicked out of that class. So, um it's pretty serious. You shouldn't uh don't cheat in school for sure. From Renata, bom dia, Bob. Do fibbing and telling white lies mean the same thing? Thank you very much for this lesson, sir. Have a great day ahead. So, I should do a a broader lesson on lying because there's different levels, right? There's telling the truth. There's exaggerating which is where you say the fish was like 12 inches long when it was only three inches long. There's telling a little white lie which is like a lie that doesn't really hurt anybody uh and then fibbing similar as well like if you take a sick day and you tell your boss you're sick but you weren't sick. It's not necessarily a lie that hurts someone. So, those are I would say those are can we say that minor lies? So, um let's see here. Um from Hamza, what does know that say? As a computer specialist, you will certainly um yeah, know that very quickly. Sorry, their their word is hidden. Someone has to say a comment so I can see the next word. But yeah, you know, I'm not immune though to those kinds of things. I'm just very wa- wary. Like I'm always on alert because I feel like um when you have a YouTube channel, people are always trying to scam you. From Hamza, hello, my teacher. Simple question. What's the difference between go through and go over? Thanks a lot. Well, if you go to the playground and they have like big tubes, you can go through the tube but you can also go to the side and climb over the tube. That's the best uh description I can give of the two. Um they have other meetings too though, right? Sometimes when life is challenging, you you go through a tough period in your life um and then sometimes when if I write something, I might wanna go over it with Jen before I send it to someone. So, oh, you will certainly notice this very quickly. There we go. Um yes, usually I notice those things. From Unsel, just hello. Your channels on YouTube are my regular hot. Very cool use of the phrase from the other channel. Even if I'm very busy during live broadcasts, I take a look and leave even if it's just if it's just to say hello. Bye. Thanks, Utsal. Good to see you here. Thanks for stopping by to say hello and to hang out and learn for a bit. Mohan says, how do I speak English without hesitation? Do a lot of writing. I know it sounds funny. You're you're talking about speaking. I'm a very big believer that writing is good practice for speaking and then also do a lot of speaking and do it with a partner that helps you and guides you. Like hire a tutor. That is your best option. Do it a lot. Hire a tutor. Um Hung. I heard that rich people often know how to cheat to reduce and eliminate their tax liability. What do you think about that? How do rich Canadians avoid paying taxes? Yeah, so it's not necessarily cheating. They just know what all the loopholes are. So, a loophole is like there's a law but then they know how to get around the law. Sometimes, it does seem like cheating. Um rich people in Canada hire very, very good accountants 
to help them legally find ways to not pay money. That would be the the short and sweet answer to that one. So, for sure. Um let's see here. From Vulpez, is it true that students in North America tell on each other if they see somebody cheating? For example, in Russia, nobody will respect you if you tell on somebody. It depends. Some students will, some students won't. I think we have the same human nature here. Students aren't always quick to tell a teacher if they see someone cheating because they don't want that person to not like them. You know, your peers are more important than the teacher in the social world. Um, but there are one or two students that might, you know, it depends. Um, yeah, that's a tricky one. I think people are the same around the world on that front. Uh, for sure. Um, Denny, checkmate. Can it be used in a positive way? For example, to cheat death. Yes. So, when you cheat death, it means that you did something dangerous and you didn't get hurt and you obviously didn't die. You cheated death. So, yes, it can definitely be used in a positive way. Um, okay. Let's get back to the lesson. I do have a few questions in the forum still but I want to keep moving. So, let me get the next slide up on the screen and we will keep moving along. Let me check. I did get one little error but I think everything yeah, everything's good. Uh okay. Sip of water. Hmm, that's good. Forgery. So, sometimes people will forge documents. Now, I talked about falsifying documents. Forging documents is similar. But usually, you forge things that are more important. So, I might falsify documents but I might forge a new passport. I might find a really nice painting in the world and use my elite painting skills to create a forgery. I might forge it. So, it's basically more like lying in paper form. You know, if I got a US passport and tried to put my picture into it, I would be forging documents and that is highly illegal as well. Again, you can see how this lesson is a little bit about lying and cheating um and activity that isn't I think isn't helpful in the world. To embezzle. So, when you embezzle, this is a form of theft that happens at work. So, someone who embezzles steals money from the place they work. So, they either submit false documents saying they did work that they didn't do so the company pays them for it or they take money directly from the cash register um or they might if they're in charge of the accounting, if they're in charge of you know keeping track of money spent and money earned, they might create like a little um system where they get some of the money and it goes to their personal account. So, there are a number of ways to embezzle. I don't know how to embezzle money. But this would be stealing money from your boss from your work. So, you're kind of cheating them out of their money. Like, you're finding a way to take money that isn't yours and then uh, I guess you just hope you don't get caught. With all of this cheating stuff, like every version of cheating, you're just hoping you don't get caught, I guess. To cheat the system. So, this is a phrase we use to talk about Someone who's found a way to cheat and not really get caught, okay? So, a good example would be in sports. Sometimes athletes find a way to cheat the system. So, they know if they take performance enhancing drugs, if they take steroids or other things, it will make them a better athlete. Well, it won't make them a better person. It will help them perform better in their event or in the sport they play. And then they might know there's testing but they might know how to cheat the system. Maybe they know that if they stop taking the steroids three months before the competition then when they have a drug test it won't show up. Um you can also use this to talk about money and taxes. There's a system for collecting income tax but maybe you found a way to cheat the system. You found a way to um pay less tax because you found a way to uh get around paying what you owe. So, to cheat the system means there's a system and you found a way to not follow the rules and not get caught. 
false advertising. So, th this one happens a lot and uh, I consider this more lying than cheating but false advertising is when you see something in a magazine or newspaper or on TV or in the ad before a YouTube video and it looks amazing and then when you buy it, it looks different. So, here's uh some false advertising. You see the hamburger on the far side. Looks amazing. Look at that. What a beautifully made hamburger and then if you go buy it, it might actually look like this one. It's a little bit mushed and it it doesn't look as big or as perfect. Um false advertising is actually illegal in most countries. Um you can't put a picture up of a hamburger with two patties and then if someone buys it, it only has one. That would be very flagrant false advertising but you can't um I think in most of the world, you can't promise one thing and then when people pay you, you give them something different. That is considered false advertising. I think some advertising, most advertising is a little bit, you don't always get exactly what you want, do you, when you buy something? Uh, table talk. You can cheat at games. There's things like stacking the deck. There's things like table talk. We talked about this in my lesson on games a few months ago. Um if I'm playing a game and if I'm playing it with a partner who's sitting across from me. So, we're on the same team and if we use certain sentences or words to mean things like if I say to Jen while we're playing cards, I don't feel so good. It might mean hey, I have really good cards in my hand or it might mean I don't have good cards in my hand. So, table talk is a form of cheating when you're playing a game. It's specifically a board game. So, it's like you're talking in code to the person you are uh, playing with and then stacking the deck would be specifically in a card game. If there are four people playing and you are dealing you without anyone noticing, you put the cards in the order you want so that you or maybe if you have a partner, get the best cards for that game. Stacking the deck and we use this phrase in life as well. Sometimes the deck can be stacked against you. If you apply for a job and the other person applying is like the nephew of the person who owns the business, we would say the deck was stacked against you. You you you're not gonna get the job. Underhanded. I could not find a good picture for this. So, I found this one. Um underhanded means to do something sneaky or dishonest or devious or crooked or deceitful or sly or fraudulent or shifty or wily. So, when you are underhanded, you're not truthful, okay? It would be underhanded for me to say um if you buy my used camera, you get three extra batteries with it but then two of the batteries aren't for that camera. That would be underhanded. So, I'm like I'm making it look like you get three batteries but two of them won't actually work when you try them. So, when you're underhanded, I think the best word would be dishonest and deceitful. Those would be the two words I would choose for underhanded. Bribery. <laughs> I thought this picture was funny because it's like an envelope full of money and it says Mr. Governor on it. So, Bribery takes place when you give someone money so they do something that they're not supposed to do. So, let's say you wanted to win a lot of money by betting on a sports team. You might then cheat the system a bit because you bribe the coach to make sure they lose the game, okay? Maybe there's a boxing match. And you know one of the fighters and you want to bet a million dollars on who will win the boxing match and then you pay the fighter you know fifty thousand dollars. You you make you give them a fifty thousand dollar bribe to basically pretend they get knocked out in the third round or something like that. So, bribery is when you give money illegally so someone does something that benefits you, okay? Um students never do this but in a school, if a student said, I'll give you twenty dollars if you give me a perfect score on my quiz, that would be bribery. I would lose my job if I accepted a bribe like that. Um so, bribery is when you give someone money. I think usually someone 
in charge of something, right? Um so that they uh do something uh for you that benefits you. Uh to stretch the truth. Um so again, this is more on the line of lying than cheating but it can relate to cheating. So, maybe it like this shirt says, it was this big, honest. Often when people go fishing, okay, let me rephrase that. Sometimes when people go fishing, they catch fish that are this big and they put them back in the lake and when they get home, they say they caught a fish that's this big, okay? So, they're stretching the truth. They did catch a fish. They're just kind of lying a little bit about the size of it. The reason I put this up about fish though is there was an example a few years ago where there was a fishing competition and it was by weight and the people were catching fish and then they were putting fishing weights in the fish so the fish weighed more to try and cheat. So, they wanted to win the fishing competition and they did it by not just stretching the truth. Like, they went a little further. They actually cheated. So, I guess when you fish, you have lead weights, right? You can You have your fishing line and you have a hook and you might have weights on the line and so they were using those weights. Um so, when they caught a fish, they were using those weights to make the fish heavier to try and uh win the competition. Not a good idea. You shouldn't cheat in a competition. Eventually, you're gonna get caught. Uh let's do one more. To get oh, there's that slide. This is a good slide. This is what happens when if you cheat, you don't wanna get caught right? The whole idea of cheating is that you're doing something to help yourself that's not good but if you do get caught, that's the phrase we use. So, the teacher here, it looks like these two people are cheating. They're passing information to each other and the teacher's like, hey, what are you doing? And pointing at them. So, cheaters um often get caught, okay? If you cheat at what you're doing, you there's always a chance that you might get caught and then after you get caught, you will have to pay the consequences. That's the phrase we would use. Okay, let's do a few more questions. Let's do members only chat as well. If you are new here and wondering what I'm talking about, we do members only chat for about 10 minutes during every live lesson. Uh it usually happens about halfway through. Uh so, you don't need to leave. You can enjoy the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna answer a few questions from the form. So, your question might even come up and I'm going to answer some questions directly from the chat from members and thank you members for being members. You're awesome. Thank you for supporting this channel and helping me uh do this work. It's kind of fun. It's a win-win, I think. Um let's see. Let's get a question over here. I'll wait for the uh chat to fill up. Jack says, hi, Bob. Good to see you. Uh I'm your regular student. I watch your videos on a daily basis. Little fix there. You always give me good vibes and I have learned a lot from you and you're a good soul indeed. Well, thank you. I try to always have a positive attitude when I am teaching. I try to have a positive attitude all the time but sometimes I am grouchy. (laughs) I was grouchy yesterday about something. I can't remember what it was. Uh let's see here. Nam. The work, the red worker. The worker out of Photoshop asked me if I need to print small papers to cheat. If you come across stores that sell cheating papers for your students, what would you do? Thanks. Um there's not a whole lot I could do but uh, I probably would be like, I probably just give him a piece of my mind. That basically means I probably would just tell him, hey, you shouldn't be doing this. I, you, you wouldn't be able to call the cops or anything. Like it, it's, fairly simple when it comes to the world of crime. Like cheating is just cheating. Um but uh yes, I would probably talk to them a little bit about it. From RM in Canada, can using your own cheat sheet, for example, a small crumple of paper with math formulas also be a reason for a kick out? Yes and I'll talk about cheat sheets later. I do have a slide for cheat sheet coming up. Uh a cheat sheet is a piece of paper um that has answers on it or formulas or equations but I'll talk about them because they're actually sometimes allowed and sometimes not depending on your teacher. Um from the chat, know that says to be caught red-handed. Yes. So, when you are caught red-handed, especially cheating, like if I, let's say I had all the answers written on my arm and I wore a long sleeve shirt to a test and then I was kind of like, looking and then the one time I look, the teacher is standing behind me. Then you would say, I was caught red-handed. 
Like I was literally caught cheating while I was cheating. Like it wasn't just the teacher thought I might be cheating. The teacher actually sees me cheating and catches me uh red handed. Uh thanks know that for that. Know that says fun question Bob. Is there a shortcut to learning English or being able to speak? Oh to speak it like a native speaker. I know there isn't really one but just in case. I always say this. The only real shortcut to learning English is solving the problem of motivation. So, the people I see who learn languages quickly are the people that A, they enjoy the learning and they're highly motivated to learn. So, I would say it's kind of like a shortcut. Like if you took two people and neither of them spoke English and one was kind of lazy and the other one was highly motivated. Like they just loved studying English every day for two hours. Um that is a bit of a a shortcut. It's still gonna take a long time to learn English but um as most of you know, most of you are teaching yourself English. You know that staying motivated is the key. It's the same with exercise. People who are really fit, um there's no shortcut but uh well actually in fitness there is but uh, they're illegal but um they're their primary reason, the primary reason why they're fit is because they're motivated and then it's easy for them to work out. So, good great question though. I know that. Key part. I have forgery, I have forgery a car parking permit long ago, Bob. Have you ever done some, some cheating? People are confessing they're cheating before. I will not comment on whether I've cheated um at school but what I will say is there was an era where it would be more likely that I might consider doing something like that but I've mostly in my life been someone where if I can't do the work myself, I'd rather just fail. Like that's really been my attitude for a long time but I think as a child, I may have cheated once or twice. As an adult, no. Uh John Wedge says, hi Bob, no questions today. As always, just listening and having fun with all the friends here. Good to see you, John. Thanks for jumping in and participating. Freddie Wolf, en France, in France, often the companies add to their advertising the mention photos non contractuel. Oh, we have that too. They put a phrase like um actual not actual size or they'll say photo for demonstration purposes. Like there's a little phrase they add to the photos uh to avoid any pursuits from the customers if the product isn't as similar as the photos which are shown. Yeah, I think they may not be exactly as shown or may not be exactly as it appears. Yeah, we definitely have that. We call it a disclaimer on there. Um so Hafia is what does photo non contractuel? It means photo um the real item may not be exactly as may not be exactly the same as the photograph. John Wedge says, I remember Red Right Hand song by Nick Cave. It was Peaky Blinders intro theme. I have not watched Peaky Blinders. Okay, that's not true. I watched a couple episodes. I should watch that show. Uh let's see. Key Park says, thank you, Bob. You are a good man. You're welcome. Know that says, thanks a lot, Bob. Motivation is always important. That and having fun and the teacher. Yes, although if you're motivated enough, the teacher shouldn't matter either but you're right though. Teachers can make a big difference. Um Bob, I remember that you cheat with a pop when you have was a child at the local supermarket. Yeah, that wasn't cheating though. That was outright stealing. Like I stole a can of pop. Yeah, my mom was mad that day. So, uh to put one over on someone, is it correct sentence? Yes. When you put one over on someone, it means like you try to cheat them and you succeed at cheating them. So, you got away with it. That's the opposite of getting caught by the way, to get away with something. Um okay. I find the word cheating timely because a student, a Japanese student was caught cheating during his exam, blamed by his teacher and committed suicide. Then this is big news now. That would be a big news story. You know, there is a strong desire. It's so the world is interesting, right? Because um there's such a strong desire to do well in school that it can sadly affect the rest of your life if you don't do well. We see that with our own students too where there's an intense drive to do well and if you fail or if you get caught cheating sometimes um it's just not a good thing. 
Lifelong learner. My mate suggested copying an assignment on the internet for a final written exam. If a person got caught, even if he plagiarized a few lines, what result will he face? Thanks. So, depends on the level. In university in Canada, if you're caught plagiarizing just once, you might get kicked out of university. They might give you a warning. Um, most likely, they'll give you a warning. I'm pretty sure if you're caught twice, you, you're you're that's it. You're out. In high school, you're more likely to get two or three warnings. Um, but certainly, um, if you plagiarize more than two times, you're you're probably just gonna get kicked out. Like, you won't be in school anymore. Um, and it goes on like a, it goes on file. But if you just plagiarize, like, it does depend how much you plagiarize. Like, if if a student wrote a paper and there were three sentences that were plagiarized, that's less serious than if the whole paper was plagiarized. There's a there's a big difference there. Uh let's see here. Uh no that says oh no that's talking to John Wedge about Peaky Blinders. Wanda says hi teacher Bob. Is it considered cheating when you copy the way a colleague speaks English or French? Thanks a lot. No, that's considered a good idea as long as you're not making fun of them. But if you listen to a YouTube video, hit pause and try to say the words the same way, copying them, that I wouldn't consider cheating. Um what would be yeah. That's just a good idea. It's called shadowing by the way. Lolly lolly merci pour ta réponse pas, pas de problème. John Wedge says, I don't remember the song in the movie Scream. Oh, I haven't watched that movie. I don't watch horror movies but um know that says to Freddie, thanks for shedding some light on it. Awesome. Um can we say that chat GPT could be chat cheat PT if it's used unfairly? That's from Freddie Wolf. Yeah, you know, that's another reason why I decided to do this lesson because um at school as teachers, we're talking about how do we prevent students from cheating using chat GPT. It is considered cheating if you use chat GPT uh to answer your questions for you. Um let's see here. From hello from Vietnam. According to Wikipedia, a white lie is a harmless lie to say when you want to give comfort to a person. Which situation would you like to use a white lie? Can you give examples? I don't know. I'm trying to think like let's say um let's say Jen is sick and let's say one of our kids came home late the night before. It was after their curfew. So, they're supposed to be home at 11 and they came home at one in the morning but Jen isn't feeling well that day and if Jen said um did our son come home on time? I'll just I might say like yeah, he made it home safely. So, I didn't really lie but I feel like if Jen's sick, she doesn't need to be annoyed with one of my kids for coming home late. So, that that to me would be like a little white lie. Um something like that. Something that doesn't really harm anybody um would be a little white lie. Okay, let me go back to subscriber mode. Uh if there are more uh questions from the members, I will answer them over the next minute and then we'll get back to the lesson in just a sec. Um key parks and everyone's just chatting. Let me do one more question and we'll finish off the lesson. Um hey Jen. One moment. <laughs> coming back. Coming back. So the other day, I got a phone call from FedEx. And they said, we have a package for you. And then they brought me these two really cute little mugs. So, the green one, I don't know if you can see. The green one says Jen. And then the orange one, which is one of my favorite colors, says Bob. So, uh thank you. I'm not sure who these were from but uh you are awesome. Thank you for sending a gift. Um I'm not asking for gifts but I do have an address below. If you ever want to send me a gift, you can. You do not have to but thank you very much for that gift. It was awesome. Um let's get back to the lesson. Yeah. By the way, um I haven't used them yet. We're we're trying to figure out what we should use them for. Tea, soup, hot chocolate, broth, 
We'll see. But they're cute. Little leather thing. Very fun. From Turkey, I believe. So, thank you. Um, okay. Let's get back to the lesson. To get caught. Where am I at here? Yes. Doping. So, this is a specific term for what athletes do to try and increase their performance using drugs or other methods um in order to run faster or lift heavier weights or perform better in their uh event. So, sometimes you'll see a news article that says, you know, um cyclists caught doping in the in the last race or during the Olympics, you might hear about an athlete is disqualified because they did a drug test and found out the athlete had been doping. So, when you take performance enhancing drugs and there's a variety of them, we sometimes refer to that as doping. Hacking. If you play any computer games, it's frustrating when the person you are playing with is better than most humans <laughs> could be. So, I played a game called Counter-Strike when I was younger. Um and uh sometimes you just knew someone you were playing against was cheating because even when you were hiding behind a wall where no one could see you, they would somehow get you. So, hacking, this would be um I think we would call these wall hacks. There's also aimbot. There's different types of um hacks you can use when playing a computer game that allow you to cheat. It's very frustrating to play a game when it's not a level playing field. When you have a level playing field, it means no one is cheating and it's just your own abilities um that are helping you win or lose. Um but when someone hacks, they uh take advantage of everyone else with their cheating. So, there's a phrase in English. If you cheat, you're only cheating yourself and I'll explain this a little bit. Let's say you have an English test coming up and you cheat on the English test and then you get a job based on the results of that test but they find out really quickly you can't actually speak English very well. You've cheated yourself. Like you you think you got ahead but eventually you just get fired. Um another example would be if you really want to run the hundred meter uh race really fast and you use steroids or some other drugs to cheat um you didn't really win, did you? Like you won against people who weren't cheating. So, you're really just cheating yourself. You're making yourself feel better but it's actually a lie. You're not actually better than the other people. So, if you cheat, you're only cheating yourself. A cheat sheet. So, this came up a bit earlier. There are two kinds of cheat sheets in the world. In some classes, the teacher will say you're allowed to bring a cheat sheet to the exam. <gasps> Crazy, isn't it? This happens in some senior level math classes at our school even. The teacher might say you are allowed to bring a cheat sheet with formulas. Let's say it's a geometry test where you need to know pi r squared and other formulas. The teacher might say you can bring a piece of paper to the exam and you may write the formula for you know diameter area of a triangle. You're allowed to have those general formulas on your cheat sheet but nothing else. And then when you write the exam, you have the formulas but I mean you still have to know how to use them, right? Um in French class, um for younger students, sometimes we say um you can bring a cheat sheet that shows you how to put verbs into the passé composé. Um whether it's uses avoir or etre as its auxiliary auxiliary verb. So, we don't say write all the answers on the piece of paper but we sometimes allow students to bring a f- little bit of information in that can be helpful for them. So, we call that a cheat sheet. When it's official, it's allowed. So, you're not actually cheating but some students will bring in a cheat sheet when they're not allowed and then they're actually cheating. Cheat day. If you watch what you eat. If you are someone like me that thinks a lot about, okay, what am I going to eat today? I don't want to eat too much. Um and then you do that Monday through Friday. You might have a day on like Saturday might be a cheat day where you allow yourself to eat whatever you want. So, you're very, we would use the word conscientious. 
That means you think a lot about what you eat throughout the week but you might have a day where you're allowed to cheat. You're allowed to have donuts. So, for me, I'm not this strict about it but I do know people who they eat very healthy food most of the month but then two or three days out of the month they have a cheat day where they're allowed to eat whatever they want. You know, a big pizza, big pizza, couple donuts, etc, etc and we call that a cheat day. A day where you are allowing yourself to cheat. Uh and then back to the original. When you cheat, you have the title cheater. So, if someone cheats on something, we say they are a cheater. So, he used steroids to win the 100 meter dash. He's a cheater. Um she copied the answers from her friend. She is a cheater. She cheated on the test. She is a cheater. So, you don't wanna get that label. You don't wanna be called a cheater. It would not be a nice thing to do. Hey, that's the end of the lesson. Let me just uh oh, is it eight twenty? Got a couple minutes here. Let me see what I got left. Oh, six remaining. Let's see what we can do. Uh questions. Six remaining questions. Here we go. Uh lolly lolly. Bonjour Bob. Cheat the worms. Is it a common idiom used in Canada? No, I've never seen that before. I'm not sure what cheat the worms would be. We do have the early bird gets the worm. I know that one but uh let's see here. I'm only gonna answer questions related to the lesson ish. Um from Kakachan. Hello, teacher Bob. My math teacher once told us that when a teacher stands, little fix there, in front of the classroom, no bad action could escape his eyes. Is that true? Yeah, we sometimes say teachers have eyes in the back of their heads which is not true. I don't have, I don't have eyes back here but what I will say is when you are an experienced teacher, you can you can get a sense of what people are doing by watching them. Here's a good example. If a student has their hand on a mouse and their other hand on the left side of their keyboard and they're moving the mouse and and they're looking intently at their screen, without seeing their screen, I'm pretty sure they're playing a video game. So, you can you can kind of get a sense from how students are be behaving uh what they're doing. Um a little bit, not totally. Um from Natalia. Hi, teacher Bob. Please record podcasts, not only YouTube. It's more convenient to listen to a podcast while doing chores or walking. Most of my lessons are available as a podcast. Um just not at the same time. So, it's usually a week later or a couple days later. So, you can if you go to any podcast platform, you can find most of my stuff. It's just a bit delayed. Um I mostly do that because like I earn some money from YouTube but I don't earn any money from anything else. So, YouTube gets everything first. Does that make sense? Um from Nikita. Greetings, teacher. I arrived in Canada yesterday for the first time. Well, welcome. It's a little cold in my part of Canada. I'm not sure where you are. Let us know when are you planning to do a speaking class? I keep waiting for it. I'm not sure soon ish. I don't know. We'll see. Um uh from Dimitri. Hello, Bob. Nice topic. Can we say that all the examples in formal situations? Yeah, they're formal and informal. Um often in English, the two levels merge. Like I would use all these phrases at work. Like, oh, I caught a student cheating. He was trying to stretch the truth. That student tried to bribe me. Um I applied for a job and I feel like the deck was stacked against me. Did you hear that Fred got caught embezzling from the company? Um oh, the people building the apartment building cut corners and now it's falling apart. All of these I would use in formal and informal conversations. I would use them both. Well, for those of you that, oh, you already saw this when I moved away but yeah, my room's clean again. If you're a member, you saw a picture of my room all messy um because I was doing some spring cleaning in here but it's all clean now. Anyways, I'm gonna rush out people. Let me just uh throw my glasses on and say bye to everyone. Um I think we had a good lesson this morning. Remember, this will come out in a shorter format in a couple days. Great for listening to or watching again. Um, and let's see here. So, um, Bob's too fast. Yeah. Um, a sixth sense, I don't know. Like, you can kind of pick up on things as a teacher. It's not perfect but you, you know, you kind of know when students are working and when they're not. 
Um, let's see here. Bye to Kaka Ten, Maxim, Ralph, Key Park. Uh, Maxim says, thank you and goodbye, Mr. Bob. Bye to you as well. Um, still curious who sent me the mugs. Maybe you can let me know in the comments if you sent me the mugs. So, um, no, that says, thanks for the amazing lesson. Bob, have a wonderful day and weekend. You too. Um, Kristen says, it's time to say goodbye. Sad. Yes, it does have to end sometimes. Uh, Kat says, thanks a lot for this great lesson. Dear teacher Bob, it's pretty complicated for me and I'm going to watch this lesson again many times. Bye. Have a great day. Yeah, this was a little, a little level up from a normal lesson. Some pretty, um, little more difficult concepts. John Wedge says, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Thanks for that. And uh, I am going to click the end button now. So, bye everybody. Have a good day. I'm gonna go teach some business and then I'm gonna teach some French and then it'll be my weekend. So, 